The next time you sit down to enjoy a delicious avocado, take a second and bow your head to give thanks to the now extinct giant land sloth. For without his sacrifice, modern man would not have avocados today. What is that sacrifice, you ask? The now extinct giant land sloth was an avocado propagator, which means that he was able to swallow avocados whole and poop out their seeds. You see, fruit trees need propagators. They need a way to spread their seeds. Each of these Monroe avocados behind me has a seed inside of it. Eventually in nature, these pieces of fruit would fall to the ground and eventually the fruit would start to rot. The seed would be exposed. The seed would take root and grow. But a species cannot survive that way. Think about it. There's a few hundred fruit on this one tree. This tree is already occupying this space. If these 200 fruit drop to the ground and all try to grow new shoots, first of all, there's nowhere for the shoots to grow because the canopy of the tree already occupies that space. And also below the ground, down here, there's only so much nutrients in the ground. And that's the right amount of nutrients for this one tree. This applies to all fruit that grows on trees. The fruit can't just drop and take root where it lands. It's got to move somewhere. And for a lot of fruit, that means a bird. You know, a bird's going to peck at an apple. A bird's going to peck at an orange. A bird's going to eat a berry. And the seeds inside of those fruit are tiny. And then that bird's going to fly around. He's going to be doing his bird stuff, you know, coasting around in the air and checking things out. And eventually that bird's going to gonna have to poop. When he poops... That's going to drop to the ground. It's going to contain the little apple seed, the little orange seed, the little seeds from the berries he was eating. Most seeds will take root and they'll grow miles and miles away from their mother tree. That's why most of the seeds we see are teeny tiny, right? From an evolutionary perspective, they had to be so that a propagator could eat the fruit, travel somewhere else, poop out the seed, and the seed will grow. Even a watermelon, right? Watermelon are this big across, but the seeds are teeny tiny. But for our beloved fruit, the avocado, Mother Nature decided to make the seeds huge. And luckily for the avocado, there was an animal large enough to not only eat the fruit whole, but to poop out its seed whole. And that animal is the now extinct giant land sloth. Now I ain't no scientist, but I think they call that a symbiotic relationship. The giant land sloth needed nutrition from the avocados to survive. And the avocados needed the giant land sloth to propagate their seeds so its species could survive. The giant land sloth weighed almost 10,000 pounds. He got to about 12 feet in height and from snoot to tail was 20 feet in length. He lived in North and South America and scientists think he had skin similar to that of an elephant. So until people took over for avocado propagation, you had the giant land sloth. 12 feet high, 10,000 pounds, 20 feet long, and he's just walking through the forest. He sees one of these things. Oh, I'm hungry. That looks good. Calm. But he's huge. He's wide. He's big. And as he's walking through the forest, I think this is, I, think this, I don't know, I like to think this is what they looked like, right? They're cool. He's walking through the forest. He's knocking down little bushes. He's knocking down trees. Elephants do this today too. They clear paths through the rainforest, right? This giant land sloth, he's knocking stuff down. He kind of makes a clearing for himself. And then he gets a little, little rumbling in his stomach. He says to himself, man, I shouldn't have ate so many avocados. And then I imagine all the other animals in the forest hear a, a horrible scream. And the giant land sloth starts passing these things. He drops them into the little clearing he made, right? There's no shade now, there's sunlight. And there's a few of these lodged in his poop. And that poop serves as fertilizer. I like to believe that somewhere along the line, he also ate a little bit of onion and some garlic and he pooped out guacamole. So now you got this little pile of guacamole poop sitting in the clearing that the land sloth just created. 
excellent growing conditions, sunlight, fertilizer, no competition with other vegetation because the gland sloth cleared it all out. And he probably walked a few miles from that tree. And then it sprouted a seedling and started to grow and a new avocado tree was born. Now, lucky for us as human beings, particularly lucky for me as an avocado farmer, we discovered that I don't have to poop one of these things out whole in order to grow a tree. We use modern agricultural techniques. Let's go to my shade house and I'll show you what we do to grow a tree. From an evolutionary perspective, the species Persia americana, the avocado, got lucky twice. It first got lucky because the giant land sloth was able to eat the fruit hole and poop out its seed hole. But then human beings came along and put a stop to it, right? They saw these big 10,000 pound mammals and said, man, I want to eat that. And they came up with very effective ways of killing the giant land sloth. In fact, they became so effective at it that they wiped it off the planet entirely. But somewhere along the line, human beings decided they liked avocados. And that's where the avocado got lucky a second time. Because without the giant land sloth, it was doomed to extinction for exactly the reason I told you, right? If the, if the seed was gonna fall directly be below a tree, there was nowhere for that tree to grow. There would be no nutrients in the soil to support it. And eventually the species would have gone extinct. I mean, even if they were on a hill, right? And they rolled down the hill, eventually you're just gonna have a whole bunch of avocado trees at the bottom of the hill. And that process would start all over again. But somewhere along the line, human beings decided, wow, we really like the taste of this food and we really like its nutritional value. And the trade-off for us to cultivate it is worthwhile for the, what we receive in return in calories and nutrition. So instead of following the giant land sloth into extinction, the avocado tree continued. The avocado tree was selected because of its utility to human beings. They saw the seeds sprouting into seedlings and the little piles of manure in the clearings in the forest. They said to themselves, well, maybe we could plant these seeds and grow these trees ourselves. And they discovered that it takes 10, 12, 15 years for the tree to produce fruit. And that sometimes the fruit tasted good. Sometimes it tasted bad. Sometimes the fruit was really large. Other times it was teeny tiny and small. And they said, let's get better at this. Let's find a way for this tree to produce fruit in its third or fourth year. They discovered a technique called grafting. They went out to already mature trees that were already growing avocados that they enjoyed to eat. They would cut a clipping from that tree and insert it into the little seedling they grew. And they discovered that not only would they get a tree that produced fruit within three to four years, but that tree would produce the exact same quality avocados as the tree from which they got the cuttings. That technique has continued into modern times what I use here on this farm. And it's what's allowed us as human beings to consume 4 billion avocados per year. And if you're one of those people who consumes a portion of those 4 billion avocados per year, and you don't want to have to poop out a seed to grow your own, and you don't want to have to graft a tree to grow your own, maybe you don't want to grow your own at all. Go to guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. That's where we sell our sleepy lizard avocados. We also sell other tropical fruit there when it's in season, and we sell these really stylish sleepy lizard avocado farm t-shirts. Our spring varieties come into season around June and usually last till early August. And then our fall varieties start in mid-September. And today happens to be the 13th of September, which means I have a bunch of avocado orders to fill. So while I go out in the grove and pick those avocados, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.